श्रीवृंद विश्व अमृत पुत्र आए धमा दिव्यातस्तु विदाहमेत पुषम महांत आदिवर्णम तमसा परस्ता तुम्हें विदी तोति मृत्यु मेती नैन्न पंथ विदती अनाय नैन्न पंथ अयनाय विदती परमश्वेताश्वतरूपनिषद लिसन लिसन ओ चिल्ड्रन ऑफ इमोटल ब्लिस I have seen the effulgent one who is beyond darkness knowing him alone one can transcend death there is no other way there is no other way peace 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 be unto all Today is a very auspicious day. Easter Sunday. Easter is considered to be the holiest of all holy days in Christendom. On this day, Christ rose from death and declared, "Death is not the end of all." human life he declared the immortality of the soul eternal life he said it is a famous saying of jesus i am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he was dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die we try to understand this message of christ from the vedantic standpoint dead though he was dead means physical death the spiritual soul the atman does not die he who liveth in me shall never die it means those who realize god and one with god they will never die they will be immortal as god is deathless so the soul is deathless when the pharisees asked jesus when the kingdom of god would come he replied the kingdom of god cometh not with observation neither shall they say lo here lo there for behold the kingdom of heaven is within you that is a great significant remark of jesus the kingdom of heaven is within you what is this kingdom of heaven vedan to interpret the kingdom of heaven is the atman the atman is within all of us the atman is the real nature of human beings this kingdom of heaven 
Malu puni satel sas. Isu atma apa hatu papa, bijaru, bimritu, bisuka, bijigitsa, api pasa, sotto kama, sotto sankalpa. Sa onnistibya, sa bijigansi tibya. E atma, free from sin, free from ignorance. Bijaru, no old age, no sickness. Bimrittu, jetless. Bishoka, griefless. Its thoughts come true, its desires come true. That you should search, look after. That kingdom of heaven. Christ's last words. I remember in one of our churches, they used to give seven sermons on seven last words of Jesus Christ. Every day, one word of Jesus Christ. They would study, meditate, they would discuss. It is extremely important that how Christian people think about Christ during Easter. The first word Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He was innocent. Pilate knew it. He tried to save his life. But this fanatic priest, Jewish priest, demanded his death because he became so popular and they could not believe, stand his popularity. They became jealous. Anyhow, so here the innocent man became a victim and he was crucified. So he first begged forgiveness for these people, those who are killing him. Forgiveness, that is a great message of Christianity, forgiveness. Nobody is perfect. Only God is perfect. Second word, Jesus said, to the penitent robber, today you shall be in paradise. His blessing is infallible. I may die, but you will be in paradise. I bless you. The third sentence he used towards his mother, woman, behold thy son. They are killing me. He was very soft corner for his mother. Showing John says, Behold thy mother. When I am dying, but please take care of my mother. Just see how much love he has for his mother. At the time of death, he was thinking the welfare, the mother. See, Ramakrishna also, all great teachers, we see, they are very devoted to the mother. Do you know why? Because this woman brought me to this world to fulfill my mission. It is not easy to become a mother. How much she go through to give birth to a baby, to raise the child, to... Take care of my mother. Fourth word he used, <clears throat> my God, my God, why thou hast forsaken me? That's a great. 
he knew that he was a son of god he knew that he was god incarnate but momentarily this forgetfulness came lord you have forsaken me that is very common when god is born as a human being he behaves like a human being <coughs> the fifth sentence he used i thirst how did going through that horrible judgment they carried him they put a crown on his thorn crown around his head this king of the jews that was written in three languages hebrew latin and greek the king of the jews they are mocking him they are lashing him in that procession i have we have seen those movies oh very pathetic i thirst so the greek soldiers gave him some vinegar to drink vinegar charitable the six sentences he used <clears throat> it is finished seventh father into thy hand i commend my spirit these are the seven sentences jesus uttered from the crucifix fix <coughs> i commend my spirit he did not say i commend my body spirit that is a very very significant utterance we find when jesus was traveling from galilee and at samaria they who stopped in a well and he wants a drinking water from that woman and that woman was telling you are galilean she was you are not supposed to take water from us jesus said the water you give people will thirst again but the water i give you will never be thirst jesus told her God is a spirit, and they who worship Him must worship Him in spirit, in truth. He was talking about the spirit, Atman, consciousness, not body. In Christianity, there is a lot of emphasis on the physical resurrection of Jesus. physically he resurrected from the grave i remember at the time i just came to st louis we had a newspaper here the globe democrat so a reporter interviewed some top christian leaders in town and asked if jesus bones are found will you be hold your faith some people say no we believe that physically he resurrected his bones cannot be found but in this respect we find saint paul he cleared about the mystery of resurrection paul says Paul believed in two types of bodies celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies he wrote to corinthian about the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption it is sown in natural body it is raised in a spiritual body there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body according to vedanta each one of us has three bodies three bodies not one 
you are carrying three bodies, I am carrying three bodies. First, Guru's body, made of five elements. Space, air, fire, water, and earth. All these human bodies are nothing but these five elements. And all these bodies made out of food. Food. Annamaya kosha. In Tuttiri Upanishad, there is a mantra. Tasmat bhai, tasmat atman, akasha sambhuta, akashat bhai, bhai rogni, agni rapa, ajba prithivi, prithivya moshada, oshadivya annam, annat purusha. From the, it is a evolution. From space, air, fire, then comes <coughs> we are fire, then water, earth, then oshodi, trees, plants, fruits, food, and from that food comes human beings, purusha. What is subtle body? It consists of 17 limbs, five organs of action, five organs of knowledge, five pranas, mind and intellect. These 17 limbs constitute the subtle body. Whole mystery of human life is in that subtle body. When that subtle body and this Atman, that is, that is the meeting point. They call it Chit Jar Granthi. Consciousness and the unconscious, they meet. And the unconscious become conscious. This body is unconscious. Because of the meeting of that pure consciousness, it, began, it has become conscious. I'm talking, you are listening. How is it possible? Well, here is a piece of iron rod. You rub, rub with a magnet, it develops the magnetic power. It also magnet, it can also can attract. Those consciousness, makes things conscious. Whole mystery is there. That is called siege body. This subtle body reincarnates, transmigrates. Causal body is ignorance. And who is living in this body? Atman. He is the enjoyer. Kacha Upanishad gave a beautiful example, comparing this human body as a chariot. You have a chariot, I have a chariot. In this chariot, who is the enjoyer of this chariot? Atman. Who is the driver of this chariot? Buddhi, your intellect. Who, who is the... Who, the, the horses are the sense organs. The rein of the horses is the mind. This is the human body. The Atman is driving. Atman is dwelling and Buddhi is driving according to the instruction of the Atman. According to the guidance of the Atman, this body is moving, moving, moving. You know, when you can meditate and see this human body, how it functions, who is behind this everything? It is a great mystery that Vedanta teaches how to search this immortality, who dies. We are coming. <clears throat> Physical. Shami Vivekananda, in one of his London lectures, made this remark. When you say man dies, your phrase is, he gave up the ghost. Whereas we say he gave up the body. Similarly, you more than imply that the body is the cheap part of man by saying it possesses a soul. 
whereas we say man is a soul and possess a body. It is the outlook of the East and the West. <laughs> body. Let me tell you a story from the Chandogya Upanishad. Prajapati, Brahma, the creator, he announced, if you know the Atman, you will get whole universe, you get all lands, all empire, everything. And all of your desires will be fulfilled. So the gods and the demons became curious. Both of these children of Prajapati, they went to the creature and said, we want to know that thing. We believe, if you know the Atman, so you will get all these things. But we want to know the Atman. Prajapati says, well, I have a training center here. 32 years you practice celibacy in my house. And then I shall tell you. After 32 years, you can understand no haircut, no shaving. The nails grew like this. Prajapati, Indra, and Virojana, they are two, gods of, two representatives of gods and the demons, went to Prajapati and said, tell us what is the Atman. Bring a bowl of water. At that time, there was no mirror, you see. <laughs> so I brought a bowl of water. Whatever reflection of your face you see in that water, that is the Atman. Virajana saw his face, long hair, beard. Yes, I understood. Of course, I did. He left. He understood this body is the Atman. Because he saw the body. His mind just grows. Bill Indra also saw his body. Beard, face, hair, long hair. He also left. Then again he came back. Body cannot be Atman, body dies. So he came back and told Prajapati, Father, body dies, body cannot be the Atman. Prajapati says, I'm glad that you came back. Stay another 32 years, Brahma Chaujya. This time he understood mind is the Atman. Another 32 years. If I give an instruction like that, all will die and leave. <laughs> 96 years gone. Still he could not understand. All right, another five years. So after 101 years, Indra understood what is the Atman. Very, that, uh, that section of the Upanishad is very interesting. Whatever you will desire, you will get it. You will conquer everything. Everything will be at your hand, if you know the Atman. Anyhow, that is the in search of immortality. And if you know the Atman, you are immortal. Of course, we shall talk about the sign of the Atman. <coughs> Asuriram, the ideology defines that Esho Atma, I, I memorize that section. And when I walk, sometimes I repeat. Esho Atma, Apahata Bapma, Bijaru, Bimritu, Vishoka, Vijigitsa, Pipasa, Satya Gama, Satya Sankalpa. Saiva Onishtibha, Saiva Vijagya. That I repeat. Yeah, it reminds me the real nature of 
human beings, the soul. According to Jashko, this whole human body goes through six changes. First, jayati, it is born. Osti, it exists. Then, it bardhate, it grows. Vipurinamate, it transforms, changes. Apakshyate, it decays. Marishyati, it dies. So all these human bodies will go through these six succeeding stages. No exception. No exception. After birth, there you will be death. Well, how can you stop death? Just to stop the birth. If you cannot just stop the birth, you cannot just stop the death. How can you stop the birth? Stop desire. If you have no desire, you will never, never, never come to this world. We have come to this world to fulfill our desires. It is the desire. Vasana pushyati bapu. It is the desire is the preservation of human body. Look at Sri Ramakrishna's problem. His problem, he has no desire, so he is merging into samadhi again and again, again and again. He cannot function in this world, in samadhi. Desire. This world is controlling by desires. How many desires are there? Are there? Three. Desire for name and fame. Desire for progeny, sex, and desire for vittoshana, desire for money, wealth. These three desires are controlling these billions and billions of people. Desire. But Vedanta gave a good suggestion. This worldly desire will bind you. That is the nature of the desire. But if you have desire for God, that will release you. That is also a desire. Good desire, bad desire. I want God. That God realization, that desire will illumine your heart and then it will be dropped off. Look, Sri Ramakrishna says, if a thorn pricks in your foot, you take another thorn and then you both away. I am tied with iron chain, and you are tied with gold chain. You are telling I am better than you. Are you, you are also bondage. You are also bound by chain. So Shatuguna is also a robber. <laughs> he can show you the way, your home, but it will not go to the society because he will be caught and jailed. <coughs> Death. That is the only certain thing in this uncertain world, death. Even though sometimes I <coughs> I heard that Steve Jobs that talk, you know, invented <coughs> iPhone, iPad, all those things. Which is a beautiful talk. One of the best popular talks <coughs> we have ever heard. He had money. He had everything one can think of. <coughs> but the doctor said, you have pancreas cancer, terminal cancer, you are going to die soon. Nobody is going to stop it. Ashadya Maniti, we are alive, that is a wonder. If you do not breathe five minutes, he will die. This human life 
is very, very, very precious. <coughs> it is not easy to get a human body. That is the reason Shankara says in Christ's jewel of discrimination, these three things are rare. Manushyattam, Mumukshyattam, Mahapurusha Sankshaya. Manushyattam, human birth. Mumukshyattam, desire for liberation. Mahapurusha Sankshaya, the company of a great soul. If you have these three, remember, you are in the right track. Death. I remember a story of Buddha. A courtesan died. She was a very beautiful woman. So the king says that, what shall we do, her body? Well, put in a glass case. When her body is integrated, gradually, gradually is integrated, Buddha sent his disciples, go and see that beautiful body. You will see that how body function goes into destruction. You know, sometimes we can see ourselves, our dearest one, our loved one, when they die. We take his or her body to the crematorium. And after three, four days, they gave a container of ashes and bones. My father, my mother is nothing but a container of bones and ashes. The room is empty. Suppose his bed is empty. Why does he go? This question is repeated again and again and again in human mind. Where does my father go? Where does my mother go? Religion unveils that mystery. How the soul reincarnates. If you read Shamishat Prakashanda wrote very nicely, how is a soul reborn? the mystery of life and death, what happens after death, how does the soul go. These things have been elaborately discussed in the Upanishads, in the Gita. <coughs> but Swami, are they true? Well, they are the revelations of the rishis, it, it, is, it is really true. Baji will go. I sometimes say, <laughs> Mr. Universe will go, Miss Universe will go. We sometimes go to the <clears throat> retirement home, nursing home. We see some people keep their young age picture on their table, you know, their marriage picture, or so. That's how beautiful I was. Now, look, what is my condition? Bhaji is not the main thing. That is the reason Swamiji gave some lectures in Gana Yoga, the apparent and real man. <clears throat> this, Bhaji, this is the apparent man, the real man is the Atman. What is the relationship between the Atman and this Abhash, shadow? That we find a story in this Student, it is a simile and in the in the Munjaku Upanishad. It is a tree. There are two birds live in the tree. The lower bird, Jivatma, dancing around, eating fruits, sometimes a sweet fruit, very happy, sometimes a bitter fruit, very unhappy. When he, he, when he eats excessive bitter fruit, disgusted. Oof, no. Then he, he looks up and finds this another bird similar, same plumage, same in the top branch of the tree. Oh, I shall go to my friend. Hops up, go one 
branch up, again forgets, again begins to eat fruits, sweet, bitter, sweet, bitter. That is the human life, even myself. We are all eating the fruits. Sometimes sweet fruits, sometimes bitter fruits. When we are disgusted, up, disgusted, up. Millions of times we are going up and up and up. Finally, when we go near that higher bird, we see, Ari, that bird and me are the same. I am only the shadow. Your face on the mirror and you are not different. That he sees. He, that upper bird and myself were the same. Atma and Paramatma, both are the same. That is called illumination. I am he. Ahang Brahmashmi, I am Brahman. How beautifully Vedanta explains this phenomenon. So it is evolutionary process. After 8,400,000, 8,400,000 birth, we get a human body. Purana says, I, I do not know our scripture says that. So continuously we are evolving, evolving, evolving. Our mistakes are also our great teachers. We are continuously evolving, evolving, evolving. I have seen many people die. I cremated also Prabhupada Ji, Shat Prakashananda Ji, Shraddhananda Ji. Three Swamis died almost in front of me. Three of them. Why did they go? It is amazing that you know how human soul moves from one to the other. <coughs> That's the reason I said this world is a vacation village. <laughs> we are here only for a short time. We remember when in school we used to memorize the Longfellow's The Sum of Life, that famous poem. Life is real, life is earnest, and the grave is not its goal. Just the word to just reach earnest was not spoken of the soul. Tell me not in mournful number, life is but an empty dream. It's a famous poem. This body, as I say, is nothing but, Holy Mother said, it is only a few pounds of ashes, that's all. So the Vedantic, teachings, you know, tell us existence, knowledge, bliss, osti, bhati, priyo, that is Ishara, Brahman, God, namo, rupa, name and form, maya. Chitrananda is a name and a form, one day it will die, but the real I, consciousness, remains the same. Do you know, sometimes I think about human beings, about four billion tennis balls are floating on the Pacific Ocean. This time in Hawaii, next time in California, it is floating, 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 floating. Sometimes under the water, sometimes on the top. Four billion. Sometimes some tennis balls, they are together with some moss, you know, that is a family life. <laughs> <laughs> and again, a big storm comes, it breaks. Again, they join, again, it breaks. You know, see, from time immemorial, this evolutionary process is going on. I used to memorize that Bichar Shagur, Oste Bhati Priya Sindhu Me Naam Rupa Janjal. Osti bhati priyo shindu. Shindu means ocean. Existence, knowledge, bliss, ocean. Brahmaj. 
Nama Rupa, name and form are Janjal, which is nothing but garbage. It appears, disappears. Floating. Is there any end? That is the question. It's coming and going, is there any end? But then say, of course. Jesus also said, there is an eternal life. Know thyself. The real man, Shamiji, I'm reading from Shamiji. The real man is one and infinite, the omnipresent spirit. And the apparent man, however great he may be, is only a dim reflection of the real man who is beyond. The real man, the spirit, being beyond cause and effect, not bound by time and space, must therefore be free. The apparent man, the reflection, is limited by time, space, and causation, and is therefore bound. Or, in the language of some of our philosophers, he appears to be bound, but he really is not. Man, after his vain search after various gods outside himself, completes the circle and comes back to the point from which he started. He says, man is a circle whose circumference is nowhere but the center is in a particular point. God is a circle. His circumference is nowhere, but his center is everywhere. That Vedanta teaches. Sarvata pani padam tat sarvata ukshi shiro mukam sarvata shruti mandloki sarvam abrita tishrati. His heads are everywhere. His hands and feet are everywhere. All heads are God's heads. How Vedanta made human beings is nothing but living gods. This human body is a tabernacle, a temple of God, and God dwells in it. And when you experience this Atman, God within you, you will be free. It is a circle. This life, this much, this much, this much, this much, this much, this much. When the whole circle is complete, you have all experience of this world, you know everything about it. Now, do you want to come back? No. Merge into that Brahman. But some people are afraid. Even Swamiji was afraid that Sri Ramakrishna was teasing him. Think of that, that you are a little ant, and here is a cup of syrup. How will you drink that syrup? Tell me. Swamiji says, I shall sit on the edge of the, of, the, of the cup, and I shall exchange my neck, and I shall sip. Sri Ramakrishna says, why? You can jump into the cup and drink. Oh, no, sir, then I shall die. My son, in the ocean of Satchidananda, nobody dies. Do you know what does it mean? It means all of us, we are trying to preserve our individuality, ego. We think the destruction of ego means death. For the reason people are afraid of death. Oh, I shall not exist. Oh, I shall not exist. It is amazing, it is all ego. But in final liberation, the ego dissolves. Ahang Brahmashmi, I dissolve into Brahman. You know, this, this Vedantic teachings are so clear, very clear. The living God is within you, and yet you are 
building churches and temples and believing all sorts of imaginary nonsense. The only God to worship is the human soul, is the human body. Of course, all animals are temples too. But man is the highest, the Taj Mahal of temples. If I cannot worship in that, no other temples will be of any advantage. The moment I have realized God is sitting in the temple of every human body, the moment I stand in reverence before every human being and see God in him, that moment I am free from bondage. Everything that binds, vanishes, that I am free. Everything that binds, vanishes, and I am free. What a beautiful message Swamiji mentioned. It's about these Vedantic teachings. Man is searching for immortality. <clears throat> death, death, death. We know the, m m many of you have read the Kathu Upanishad. Nuchiketa asked this question to Yama, the god of death. I said, could you explain this mystery? Some people say that after death, soul exists. Some people say the soul does not exist. You are the god of death. You know this mystery. Why don't you tell me? Yama tried to divert his mind to all the, in various ways, but failed. Later on, he explained the mystery of life and death. That portion of the Upanishad is very, very poetic, very beautiful. There he explained the true nature of the Atman. You see, we save money, we save this, 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 this. But Brihadar Raghupursha tells us, when you will die, what will go with you? He told Jagabalko was telling Janaka, these three things will go with you. Vidya, karma, purva, prajna. Vidya, knowledge, wisdom, which you have gained in this life, that will go with you. Karma, good and bad, they will go with you. Purva, prajna, your previous life's impressions, experiences will go with you. Nothing else. <coughs> in search of immortality. That, what is called Nachiketa, when he asked questions, Jama gave some instruction about, you know, some of the analogy we find in Upanishad so nice. Do you know what is human body? Upanishad tells, have you seen a big cobra in an ant hill, lifts its slough? the skin, and goes away. The human body is nothing but a slough. It is the skin of the Atman. And do you know how does it transmigrate? I am telling you, four, five thousand years ago, they are giving this analogy. Have you seen a leech? It takes one blade of grass and grabs the other one. Again, it grabs the other one. Again, it grabs the other one. That is the way soul reincarnates from one body to other body. You know, sometimes I visualize in 5,000 years ago how these people got this analogy, how a soul migrates one to the other. <clears throat> I was talking about that <clears throat> Kato Upanishad. The knowing self is not born, it does not die. It has not sprung from anything. Nothing has sprung from it. Birthless, eternal, everlasting, and ancient. It is not killed when the body is killed. If the killer thinks he kills it, kills. And if the killed man thinks he is killed, neither of these apprehensions arise. The self kills not, nor is it killed. These are the great message of the Atman. It's a mystery. Consciousness. 
that God within us. So the Atman has no birth. Aja, Amara, Amrita, Abhaya, Abhayam by Brahma, Abhayam by Brahma. Aja, it is birthless. Atman is not born. Body is born. And that Atman is the real man and the body is the apparent man. So we are holding the apparent man, we are attached to the apparent man, means bodies. That is Maya. Name and form. We love our father, mother, brother, sister, relatives, children. We love them. But from the Sri Ramakrishna say from the bottom of the heart you know they are not yours. They all belong to God. That's the reason Vidarna Gubunisha says. Nava Ari Puttu Kamaya Putim Priya Bhavuti Atmanastu Kamaya Putim Priya Bhavuti Nava Ari Kama Jaya Yui Kama Jaya Priya Bhavuti Atmanastu Jaya Priya Bhavuti A husband is loved not for the sake of the husband. The husband is loved for the sake of the self. The wife is loved not for the sake of the love, wife but for the sake of the self, Atman. You know, this is a great mystery. Really, it is a great mystery. I'm a husband, my wife, my father, mother, what do you do? We do not keep the dead body at home. We cremate or we bury. It is not the body. It is amazing that how it works. It, it is this love, this prio, is this 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 comes from the connection with the self, the Atman. We do not love the dead bodies. We love the living body. There is a city with eleven gates belonging to the unborn Atman of undistorted consciousness. He who meditates on him grieves no more, liberates from the bonds of ignorance, he becomes free. This verily is that, the Atman. When all desires in the heart fall away, then the mortal becomes immortal and here attains Brahman. Please, do you know the Jama was telling, let me tell you. Here is a glass, grass, and you are taking the stock, the inner stock. You pull it, the grass will remain there, but it comes out. So this Atman is that inner stock. It is separated from the body. As long as that Atman is in the body, we are alive, we are functioning, we are talking, we are behaving, we are working, we are doing all sorts of things. When Atman leaves, the body is dead. It is human body, what it is. And why are you, why are you so attached to this body? Why are you not attached to the Atman? So the whole mystery of spiritual life is to divert your mind from the body to the Atman. And when you realize the Atman, you are immortal. Otherwise, you will have to come back again and again, recycling, recycling, endless. Well, how can I get this knowledge of the Atman? Tat bigyan artham sa guru me bhai bhai gachye samitpani shruti nam brahmo nishtam 
to know this Atman, you go, must go to your guru with humility. That, that guru will give you this knowledge and will teach you how to experience the Atman. Then you will be free. You will be immortal. Acharyavan Purushu Veda, the person who was a true teacher, good teacher, only he knows this Atman. These are the teachings of the Upanishad. We are all blindfolders moving in this world, saying no direction. But the Guru removes that bandage from the eyes and directs that is your real home, God, Atman. That is the way we are searching immortality and our teachers are guiding us to attain that immortality. Thank you. I have an announcement. Many of you might have seen that our president of the order, Swami Sparanandaji Maharaj, passed away last Tuesday. He was 94 years old. I knew him from the beginning of my monastic life. We lived there 10 years in Advaita Ashrama the publication department. And uh, was, in the last two days I wrote my memoirs about him and sent to India. I never lived with, I never knew a person 66 years except him, not even my family members. From 1958 till this year, I knew him. Even last year, when I was in India, he used to come to the temple to bow down to the master in wheelchair, and I used to greet him in the courtyard. He's a very good sadhu, great karma yogi. He passed away. So many Swamis I knew passed away. Uma Satuma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mritturma Amritam Gamaya. Abhira Bhinmayedi, Rudra Jate Dakshinamukam, Tinamampahinitam, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, lead us from darkness to death to immortality, light us through and through, and guide us evermore with the loving presence. Peace, 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 friend to all.